So a lot of people have asked me about charging the Tesla. And uh, this is your charging cable. Uh, it has different adapters here on the end. This is my 220 plug, and then here's the adapter for 110. So you can absolutely charge your uh, Tesla with just a normal plug outlet. Uh, but the 110, this one here, will only do about four uh, miles of charge per hour. So it'll take a long time to charge, but it is a good backup. Uh, and I used it when I first started. What you typically do is you put in a 220, it's, uh, everybody calls it the dryer outlet, uh, a 220 uh, connector. Uh, you can get an electrician to put this in. Uh, the main expense is the length of the run from your circuit breaker to your garage. Um, and uh, I think it was uh, about $1,000 to put in, but luckily Pennsylvania had a credit. So you plug that in, it lights up here. And then the cable's nice and long, so you can see I have it run all the way over to here. I put a little hook here, and then you just uh, take the end, which is this piece, come over to the corner. There's a little button here that you press, which opens the door. Uh, then it, when it's white, you can plug it in, and it goes uh, green when it starts charging. When it's charging, the um, this end will link like that to let you know that uh, the power is uh, going through the charger. So you can do um, 220, 110, by the way the 220 does about 40 miles of charge uh, every hour and the 110 does about four. The superchargers can do like about 200, 250 miles of charge every hour so that's much much quicker. Um, and then I believe there's also one other connector for the universal uh, connector that um, the third party charging stations use. So the best way to think of the cost is it's about one third the cost of gas. So the, uh, it's about $20, $30 more a month. Um, that's what uh, I see in my bills. Uh, it, but that all depends upon how much you drive and how much you're charging but it's really one third the cost of gas equivalent. So there you go. So somebody asked about uh, whether the Tesla drives like a normal car. And there are some uh, strange things about the Tesla that I wanna explain. So in the driving setup, uh, the first thing that a lot of people are um, alarmed at <clears throat> is the regenerative braking. In the standard mode, which is what you get by default, uh, you get a pretty severe braking effect every time you pull your uh, foot off the pedal. And uh, it's almost like a downshifting in a car. And that's uh, what the Tesla's doing is it's generating uh, power from slowing down the car uh, and saves you money. Uh, by putting it in low, uh, it will act more like a normal car and f you'll get like a coasting feeling when you let go of the power pedal and you won't get much regenerative braking. You will get some, but a lot less. It'll just basically feel like a normal car when you let go of the power pedal. I'm gonna come up to a turn. This is in standard regenerative braking. It definitely slows me down a lot in that turn. And I'll do the same thing here in low now. Coming up to another really sharp turn, so I'm gonna have to slow down a lot. It's not slowing down, and I am going to put some good foot on that brake to come to the speed that I needed to go to to make the turn. Um, in the previous example I just did, I really hardly put my foot on the brake. Um, let me try it again here on a turn. So i got another big turn coming up here to the right, and I let go, and I... Took it a little fast, but I really didn't need to hit the brake, and I didn't hit the brake. Um, when you're in standard um, regenerative braking, uh, you really just don't touch the brake pedal very often. It's really pretty cool. It takes a little while to get used to when to let go of the brake or to throttle off the power pedal just right. But uh, here I'll do it again. And probably could have just throttled off there. I, I uh, jumped. The uh, difference with the Tesla in driving is that you don't bring your foot off the pedal 
real quickly. You can, but you a lot of times just feather it back and the regen regenerative braking engages. So uh, I'll just throttle back a little right now. Not off, my foot's not off the pedal. You can see it regener regenerating there. So as soon as you throttle back a little bit, uh, the regenerative braking kicks in and you start slowing down. If you bring your foot completely off, you get a whole bunch of, uh, almost like a downshift. And it is actually fun, you can, if you time it right, you can sort of like downshift or regenerative brake into it. So turn. another uh, oddity about the Tesla is that when you uh, are at a stop and you let go of your brake, uh, the car is not going to creep forward. It's not going to start moving. It's, it's just going to sit there. And there is this creep mode which you can turn on, which will simulate the effect that most cars uh, give you, which is you'll start moving forward as soon as you take your foot off the brake. And uh, with the Tesla, it just sits there because you have to press the power pedal to get uh, going. So that's a mode you can turn on. And then lastly, the acceleration is just so dynamic and so fast on the Teslas. Uh, it's, it's immediate when you press the power pedal. There's no lag uh, in uh, acceleration. That they have a chill mode, which will simulate, again, more of a standard car, where when you press the power pedal, there'll be a ramp up of acceleration, not immediate acceleration. So if uh, you want that, you can just do the chill acceleration versus standard acceleration. Okay, so let's see. Oh yeah, interesting. So I am driving, right? And when I punch it, it doesn't punch like I'm used to. So let's turn off chill. Oh yeah, <laughs> big difference. So in standard acceleration, it's the usual, in, I, I want to call it insane acceleration or just really aggressive acceleration. Under chill, it's definitely slower, uh, gradual uh, acceleration. So uh, not a big deal, but I guess if um, someone's sitting in the car, driving the car for the first time, it could make sense to go into chill mode, low, and cr turn on creep. These, these um, regenerative braking low, chill acceleration, and creep mode, which I think you have to be probably parked to turn on creep, those would make the, car, the Tesla act like a regular car. And um, uh, if someone's driving it for the first time and they don't want to really ex experience the Tesla uh, standard functionality or uh, way of driving, which is a little crazy, um, you could turn those on and make it a little easier on them because uh, especially the regen braking, you, you really get this decel uh, when you um, let your foot off the power pedal. The last question people always ask is, does, can the Tesla drive completely by itself yet? Well, it's a little confusing because the uh, te Tesla website shows this video uh, demonstrating that uh, the Teslas can drive by themselves completely autonomously. And uh, the issue is that it's not available yet. You can purchase it, uh, but you cannot actually uh, use it yet. So the only feature that's really available is autopilot. So it's called Enhanced Autopilot on the website, and it's $5,000. And basically, it on highways allows you to let the car steer, and it will keep you in the lane that you're in. You can use your blinkers to change lanes. So I thought I'd show you autopilot. I'm on a highway. I uh, simply just double tap, and uh, it takes over both uh, your speed and your steering. Keep your hands on the wheel. Keep a little bit of a torque, otherwise you're going to get a warning every minute. So I'm in autopilot, just wanted to show you, it's very, very cool. You just turn on your blinker here and uh, you do have to check that there's no traffic and it changes lanes by itself and then turns off the blinker. Very cool feature of autopilot. So the full self-driving option is $3,000. It can be purchased today, but it's not been released. There is some talk that uh, in August of this year, 2018, 
uh, the first capabilities of uh, full self-driving may be released. Uh, everyone's speculating at what it might be. Uh, I'm thinking it might be uh, parking, auto, automatic parking in a parking lot um, because there wouldn't be any regulatory issues with it on local roads, but uh, we'll see. So uh, eventually, uh, probably in a year, maybe year and a half, uh, the full self-driving will be fully released and you'll be able to put in a destination and the car will drive you completely to that destination. Uh, when that's going to be available is really hard to tell at this point, but uh, it's coming. Thanks again for watching. My videos uh, for the Model 3 are here in the top right. My son's channel, The Nerd Writer, is in the top left. Check him out. He's got some really good videos. And uh, please don't forget to subscribe. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.